Good morning. Welcome to worship on this, the second Sunday in Advent, the first Sunday in December. We're very pleased to have those of you who are in this sanctuary. We pray that you will be blessed as we worship together on this second Sunday in Advent, and we welcome our viewers here in the United States and other parts of the world. We pray that as we worship together, our hearts will be warmed and we will feel the presence of God's Spirit among us. At this time, we will have the ringing of the bell and then the lighting of the altar candles first, followed by the two candles in the Advent wreath, the candle of hope from last week, and the candle of peace this week. Let us stand for the lighting of the candles. Mr. Bob Green and his wife Sandy Green will be lighting the candles. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Isaiah 40, chapter 1. Last week we lit the candle of hope and light it again today. calls the people to get up to a high mountain. For generations, people have cried out to Isaiah, uh, Isaiah does, that the paths are crooked. The valleys are too far down, the mountain's too high. We fear stumbling on uneven stretches of the journey. What if we could see it all from God's perspective? That through it all, God is the eternal source of peace. Every time you set out on a road of pathway, pause and ask God to grant you peace. Whenever you do remember, God promises of peace. God of our journeys, whether we walk with purpose or wander without clear direction, whether we are in a valley or on a mountaintop, Grant us your eternal peace. 
Amen. Amen. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. A round of applause for the Greens. Assisted by our brother, um, Donald Dyack. Thank you so much for lighting the candles today. You may be seated, please. Thank you very much. Now let us continue our worship. Uh, again, welcome to all. I'd like to acknowledge our technicians for today. We have Daniel Crast, Richard Falls, and David Vosbury. Welcome, gentlemen. Andrew Gilbert and Joe Barty are also members of our AV team. And we want to recognize that. Our musician for today is Lois Marabito. A round of applause for Lois. Today's uh, web sponsors, the Vosbury family, in honor of Jim Trowbridge's birthday, and the Gilbert family, in honor of Andrew Gilbert's 23rd birthday. This week's announcements, the AA groups, the Al-Anon and the al groups will meet at their regular times. And as we look ahead, I um, just want to let you know that the gift stars are up. If you look behind you, those of us who are present, they're stuck to the glass there at the front or at the back depending on how you see it <laughs> so they're there if you'd like to donate or get a gift or gifts um, please feel free to take a star or some stars uh, remember that the gifts that you purchase should be returned by the 16th of December so that they can be um, prepared for the recipients. Um, also, keep in mind that if you take a star or stars, that you should attach them to the gift or the gifts that you get so that it can be known for whom those gifts are intended. I'd like to mention here that um, Vivian Marshall did a very outstanding um, made a very outstanding effort to raise funds to help to purchase gifts. Um, so if you notice this year, um, you know, normally we'd have maybe at, at least two or three windows filled. Um, but she's taken maybe about half the stars this year because of the amount that she raised selling cookies. So even though she's not here, I'd like to recognize that and give a round of applause to Vivian Marshall, one of our young people. Thank you so much, Vivi. Keep up the good work and keep on making those delicious cookies. And the Christmas food chart is also posted. You know, these are things that we do every year at this time. And we want to maintain the tradition, even though this year has been such... Um, an unusual one. So the, 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 the food chart is posted and you are kindly asked to check it out. Items should be returned by December 20th. Uh, yesterday, there was a blood drive here. The American Red Cross had a blood drive, uh, of course, sponsored by the SOS group. Um, headed up here. Um, the, the drive was headed up by Lois at the piano. And 
I want to commend um, all those who were associated with the drive. We had a good blood drive with 24 donors and 28 pints collected. We surpassed our goal. So a big hand, congratulations to the SOS, to all the donors. Thank you so much for coming in and donating as you did. Um, blood is always needed, and so whenever you hear about a drive, um, do your best to support it. On the 24th, which is what, Christmas Eve? We will have our Christmas Eve service. Um, this year, we are making some special arrangements for the service, given the uncertainty. And beginning next week, the 13th, and then the following week, by the, by the 20th, uh, we would like to put together a Christmas Eve pageant. And we'd like persons to participate, especially um, from the younger people among us, um, to play certain parts like angels, shepherds, wise men, etc. So beginning next week, God's willing, after worship, we'd like to be able to record some of those parts, to pre-record them, so that we can have them, um, you know, we are not sure what might happen. So we want to be sure that we can put off a good Christmas Eve service. So keep that in mind, and um, I will try to reach out. Maddie will be reaching out to some of our young people, and I will be sending you some parts, um, hopefully this week. Thank you so much. We will continue our worship then with the hymn. Come, thou long expected Jesus. Please stand. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, creator of us all, we pause in this moment and center ourselves. We still ourselves and we know that you are God. We rest in the depth of your love that exceeds our deepest longings. We are grateful that there is nowhere we can go away from your spirit. There is nothing we can do to separate us from your loving presence. 
There is nothing, O oh Lord, that can snatch us out of, our ha- out of your hands. This is the faith that we hold on to, even when we do not see your hand or feel you near us. Come to us today, we pray, with your transforming power and your abundant life. We pray that you will meet each of us at the point of our deepest need. Open and soften our hearts to receive all that you have for us. Lord, you know the heavy and challenging burdens, fears, and uncertainties that we are carrying. Fill us with your love that casts out all fear. Touch us with your comfort that heals our wounds, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Infuse us, we pray, with your grace that restores our souls and with your joy that renews our hope. You are the source of new and transformed life, new revelations and new opportunities. Our certainty rests in you and we give you thanks and praise. We give thanks that we can gather on this first Sunday of a new month, first day of a new week. And Lord, as we come together, as we worship, wherever we may be at this time, we pray that you will bless us and fill us with your spirit and grant that in all we do and all we say, your name will be glorified. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, my dear sisters and brothers, you may remain seated. Join me in the responsive psalm for today. Psalm 85, verses 1 to 2, and then 18 to 13. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him. Mercy and truth have met together. Truth shall spring up from the earth. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. Righteousness shall go before him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our offertory prayer, let us pray. Almighty God, we bring our praise to you and our thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, that you have placed us in this world and that you have surrounded us with such bounty and beauty. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts 
you so freely give unto us. Especially do we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that you love us so much that you gave him to be our savior. In response to your generosity and your love, we make our offerings now. We pray, O oh gracious God, that you will bless the offerings that we present. And along with them, we pray that you will accept us as living sacrifices to be used in your service. Bless, sanctify, and use us and all that we have and are for the building up of your church and for the extension of your kingdom here on earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Thanks very much to, to our ushers. Thank you so much, Louis, for providing the music while the offertory was being received. Thank you so much. We have um, a couple of children here today. Always a pleasure to see the children, so give them a round of applause. Please come, um, Seth and Josie, come. Don't, don't, don't. You can just stand right there as um, I address you very briefly. Now, Seth had a birthday recently, right? So we want to give Seth a round of applause. He's now one decade old, right? A whole decade, 10 years, very good. And we, we wish you many more decades, um, Seth. Um, you need how many to catch up with our brother, Bruce Phelps? <laughs> You need several more. So um, congratulations, and, and Josie, his sister, is here today. Now, last week, we began, what season did I tell you? The season of ADV Advent. Very good, very good. The season of Advent, and I told you Advent um, is a Latin word that means coming. So it's a time when we wait and prepare for the coming of Jesus. You know, we celebrate the birth of Jesus at this time. Now, while we are thinking about the birth of Jesus, we also remind ourselves that the Jesus who came as a baby a long time ago will come again sometime, not as a baby, but as a judge, and we will all have to appear before him and give an account of the way we have lived. So that is something that you will understand as time goes on. So we, we hear a lot about the second coming of Jesus, the first coming at Christmas, and then we hear about his second coming. We don't know when that second coming will be, but we know that it will happen sometime. Now in the meantime, as we have been lighting these candles, we are being reminded of some very important words. Like last week, it was hope, remember? And you can see it there in the, in the wreath. Now this week, we lit the second candle, the candle of peace. And I told you last week in the little introduction to Advent, 
I told you last week that that peace candle is sometimes referred to as the angel's candle. The hope candle is called the prophet's candle. The, the, the peace candle is called the angel's candle. And I want you to keep in your mind that when we read the Christmas story, when you hear about Christmas, you hear about angels, right? Angels seem to feature a lot in the Christmas story. For example, um, the night when Jesus was born, an angel appeared to a group of individuals known as shepherds. Shepherds, right? The angel appeared to the shepherds and told them about the birth of Jesus. And throughout the story, you're going to see angels. Now, what I want you to tell me is this. Whenever you meet an angel, what do you observe? What do you notice? What does the angel do? Does what? I didn't get you. The angel flies, okay, yes, angels fly. We imagine them with their wings, yeah. We think of them as winged creatures. They say important stuff. You know, so while flying, while flying is good. I wish I could fly. You know, sometimes I wish I could fly. But while flying is good because they, they, then because they can fly, they can appear just about anywhere. But what is important is the important stuff that they see. The messages that they bring. So I want you to remember that angels always have a message, a message of peace, a message of encouragement, even sometimes a warning, but they always bring a message. In fact, the word for angel, angelos is the word for angel, which actually means messenger. So my word for you today as you prepare to go with Maddie to a children's church is that you can be messengers. You can be angels. Even though we don't have the wings, we can be messengers. We can go and tell other people important stuff. Now, think of some of the people to whom you can be messengers. You can be messengers to your friends in school, your peers. You can be messengers um, to members of your family. You can be a messenger even to a stranger, people you do not know. But angels always have important stuff and good stuff to say. So I want you to keep in mind that you can be God's angels and God's messengers in this time, in this day and age. So we really appreciate you and we want to encourage you to go and help to spread the good news, to tell other people of the wonderful messages that God has given you. Uh, go and share it with them. So may the Lord bless you, Josie and Seth. May the Lord smile up upon you and may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance on you and give you his peace. And send you and equip you to be his messengers now and always. Amen. God bless you. Please go with Maddie to a children's church. Let us pray the prayer for the second week of Advent. Let us pray together. Merciful God who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading for today, Mark chapter 1, 
1 to 8. You may stand, please, for the reading of the gospel. Mark chapter 1, 1 to 8. Read along with me, please. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated, my dear sisters and brothers. Let us pray. Lend power to my words, O God, for I ask of my hearers more than hearing. Let my voice prompt love and compassion, repentance and forgiveness, courage, obedience, and commitment. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The way of peace. The way of peace. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him. And were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Mark 1, 4 and 5, the way of peace. The gospel writer Mark begins his account of the good news or the gospel of Jesus Christ with a reference from the prophet Isaiah about a messenger who would go before the Messiah, the Lord, to prepare the way for his coming. James M. Freeman, um, in a book entitled Manners and Custom, Bible Manners and Customs, um, describes um, this custom um, from which Isaiah seems to draw in his prophecies. And I quote from James Freeman's book. It has been the custom from ancient times for oriental monarchs when wishing to travel through their dominions to send men before them to prepare their way by removing stones, leveling rough places, filling up hollows, and making the road pleasant and easy for the distinguished travelers." End of quote. So this was a custom. And when the prophet Isaiah wrote, he probably was aware of that custom from which he drew. And now, what we see in the gospel according to Mark is Mark applying that prophecy from Isaiah to John. John that we call the Baptist or the baptizer. He is the messenger who goes ahead to prepare the way. 
John has come to be known as the forerunner or the herald who announces the coming of the Son of God. John had a special role to play in the whole story of salvation. His role was to get people ready for the coming of the Savior, the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Now, according to Mark, John appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John was a very special character, it seems. He ate locusts and wild honey. That is what his diet consisted of. And he dressed in a way that made him seem very um, unusual, um, if I may use that term. But people came to him and John baptized them as they confessed their sins. So while John's preparation did not involve the kind of um, physical work described by Freeman in his book, Bible, Customs and Manners, removing stones, leveling rough places, filling up hollows, and making the road pleasant and easy for the distinguished travelers, it involved the spiritual equivalent to these things. When you think of what John did, it was like the equivalent to what is described in the book from which I quoted. You see, my friends, there is such a condition that occurs in human beings known as having a stony heart, stone heartedness and callousness. There, it is possible to see in human beings a roughness around the edges, a roughness in their manner. And it is possible to see in human beings at times a hollowness, an emptiness inside. And it is true as well, my friends, that as human beings, sometimes we can be unpleasant and difficult in our attitude and in need of transformation and change. So when we think of John's role as a forerunner, the one going ahead to prepare people for the coming of Jesus, there's a sense in which these are the things that John's um, uh, mission would have involved. John came to prepare the people to receive Jesus. The Son of God. To receive the Son of God into their hearts. Hearts that sometimes grow cold and stony and callous. He was on a spiritual mission to help people get ready for the one coming after him. Who was more powerful than John? And who would baptize not with water, but with the Holy Spirit. Friends, it is not unusual at this time to see people very busy sprucing up their houses, throwing out the old, old furniture, for example, to make way for the new. And while that kind of preparation has its place, it's quite appropriate that at some point we get rid of things that we do not need or things that have grown um, old. There is another 
more important type of preparation that often gets overlooked in the busyness of the season. It is the spiritual readiness, the preparation of the heart, the mind, the soul, the person to receive the Son of God. The reordering and rearranging of our life and our priorities to make room for Jesus and to give more prominence to him. It is interesting, I find, when we read the passage for today from the gospel according to St. Mark, that John appeared in the wilderness and people went out to meet him, to see him there. The wilderness. This, this reminds us that spiritual preparation involves individuals removing themselves or withdrawing from the noisy and busy places in order to see God in the silence. And to see themselves for who they really are without all the props of life and to see what they really need. So John's work took place in the wilderness and people went out there to see him. And sometimes, my friends, we need to withdraw from the noise and the hustle and the bustle and the busyness of life so that we can find God in the silence and discover what we truly need and what God alone can give us. And John's message was one of repentance. He proclaimed, as the text says, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. When people came to John and were baptized, that was a sign that they wanted to change the direction of their life. They recognized that they were not heading in the right direction. They recognized where they might have missed the way. So when they came to John and they heard John, they examined themselves and they accepted the baptism of repentance that John was carrying out as a way of indicating their desire to change their life's direction. You see, my friends, they wanted to forsake the old way and move in a, a new direction. The direction that John came to, to announce that new direction that Jesus coming into the world would usher in. Repentance, you see, is a word we hear about in the church. It is a very important word in our Christian vocabulary. And it is a word that has to do with changing the mind or changing the heart changing our direction. And friends, when we think about it, there is need for all of us to repent. There are things for which we need to repent. And the way of peace that we are considering today involves the confession of sins, that is, recognizing where we have erred, recognizing where we have strayed from God's way, recognizing where we have been disobedient to the call of God, and repenting and, and changing direction while accepting the forgiveness that God offers. Paul writes in Romans chapter 5 verse 1, Therefore, 
Since we have been made right with God by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. So when we come into that right relationship with God, having recognized the error of our ways and and turning from those ways and turning to God, we confess our sins and God pardons us, God justifies us. And when we are made right with God, then we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we prepare for the Lord who's coming, John proclaimed, let us remember to prepare our hearts and our lives through prayer, through confession of our sins, through repentance and the acceptance of God's forgiveness so that we will be able to receive Jesus who comes and who wants to make a place in our hearts or set up his throne in our hearts. And this is the way of peace, my friends. Inner personal peace. And when we are at peace with God, then we will find that we are at peace with ourselves. There will be peace in our homes. There will be peace in our neighborhoods. And there will be peace in the world. Peace, my friends, begins with each of us being at peace with God through the recognition of where we might have been disobedient to God, repenting of our sins, changing our direction, finding peace with God, acceptance with God, And then peace with ourselves. And then that peace will overflow and spread throughout our community and our world. There's a book by C.S. Lewis. He was um, a very good Christian author. And this book is entitled Mere Christianity. And C.S. Lewis writes the following. I want to quote it for you. He says, imagine yourself as a living house. God comes in to rebuild that house. At first, perhaps you can understand what he is doing. He is getting the drains right and stopping the leaks in the roof and so on. You knew that those jobs needed doing, and so you are not surprised. But presently, he starts knocking the house about in a way that hurts abominably and does not seem to make any sense. What on earth is he up to? The explanation is that he is building quite a different house from the one you thought of. Throwing out a new wing here, putting on an extra floor there, running up towers, making courtyards. You thought you were being made into a decent little cottage, but he is building a palace. He intends to come and live in it himself. End of quote. I find this very meaningful. It reminds us, my friends, of the total restructuring that God wants to do in our lives. When we repent, when we turn to God, when we turn from our wicked ways, when we recognize that we have not been living in the way that God wants us to live and we turn in repentance and faith, God can reconstruct us and renew us. And God will come and dwell in us. And we will have God's peace and God's power that we can then share with the world. So, as we 
prepare my sisters and brothers to celebrate the festival of the nativity. Remember that in Jesus, God comes to dwell with us. So let us use our time to prepare to live in God's presence and experience the peace that God brings. Let there be peace on earth. And let that peace begin with each of us as we accept God's forgiveness and as we receive God's presence into our lives in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will listen to Emily Hall doing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel And ransom captive Israel That mourns in lonely Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Thank you very much. A hand for Emily, please. My dear sisters and brothers, we will observe the sacrament of the Lord's Supper at this time. Uh, when the time comes to receive your prepackaged elements, you will be directed by our stewards. Um, Sandy and Don, uh, we will take one side first and then you receive and go back and they will direct you accordingly. And of course, as we've done, as we've been doing, when you get to your seat, then you will open your package and receive the elements. We will do that together. But first, our Lord Jesus, on the night he was arrested, took bread into his holy hands, and looking up to heaven, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this and eat it. This is my body, broken for you. After the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Whenever we eat the bread and drink from the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me and receives me will not hunger and will never thirst. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you 
that we can share in this sacrament today. We thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus made. Thank you, Lord, that by his body broken, we can be made whole. By his blood shed and poured out, we can be washed and cleansed from our sins. So now as we receive this sacrament, we remember the sacrifice once made for our salvation. And in gratitude, O Lord, we come, we receive, and we give up ourselves to your service and pray that you will make us who receive these elements, the body of your son Jesus, his very presence in this world. So be with us now, O Lord, and bless us Grant us the forgiveness of sins and grant us your light, your peace, your joy, your hope and love. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. The body of Jesus broken for you. The blood of Jesus shed for you. The body of Jesus broken for you. The blood of Jesus shed for you. The body of Jesus broken for you. The blood of Jesus shed for you. The body of Jesus broken for you. The blood of Jesus shed for you. The body of Jesus broken for you. The blood of Jesus shed for you. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out, says Jesus. When we taste the mystic wine of thine outpoured blood, the sign, fill our hearts with love divine. My body which was broken for you, says Jesus, and my blood which was shed for you, preserve you to eternal life. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of, the bread of life, the blood of Jesus shed for you. Those who come and receive will never hunger. Those who come and receive will never thirst. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of life. When we taste the mystic wine of thine outpoured blood, the sign, fill our hearts with love divine. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Jesus to thy table led, now let every soul be fed with the true and living bread. The body of Jesus, which was broken for you, the blood of Jesus shed for you, preserve you to eternal life. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out, says Jesus. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of life. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of life. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of life. My flesh is meat indeed, says Jesus. Amen. My flesh is meat indeed, says Jesus. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out, says Jesus. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of life. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of life. My flesh is meat indeed, says Jesus. 
The body of Jesus which was broken for you, the true bread which comes down from heaven. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. The body of Jesus broken for you, the true bread which comes down from heaven. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of life. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of life. Come on to me, all you who are tired from carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of life. The body of Jesus broken for you, the wraps that side. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of life. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out, says Jesus. The body of Jesus broken for you. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven. My flesh is meat indeed, says Jesus. The body of Jesus broken for you, the bread of life. Our Lord Jesus, the night he was arrested, took bread into his holy hands. Then he said to his disciples, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take now my sisters and brothers And let us eat in remembrance that Christ's body was broken for us. Let us take and drink in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for us. Let us be thankful. There are those who didn't receive, please come. Mm -hmm. Having received Please join me in prayer. This prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for feeding us in this sacrament, uniting us with Christ, and giving us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all humankind. Amen. Friends, as we prepare to conclude, um, we receive some messages that I'd like to share. Many thanks from our viewers to the Greens for their role in the service today. Um, Noreen Butterfield, prayer for Beth Peachy for surgery tomorrow. For the family of John Love, who passed away yesterday, and for everyone that's traveling. Norma Noel, prayers for my niece, Lee Harris. Um, she is um, sick. Uh, Pat Hoffman Marino, um, asking for prayers for her eye surgery um, tomorrow. Um, trust everything goes well. David Vosbury, prayers for those children learning in person at school, that they can continue to do so. Prayers for those children and parents learning at home, that they can continue to have a quality education. Thomas Anderson, I am having both my legs wrapped with a casting material this Friday, so he's asking for prayers. Shauna Ann, 
asked for prayers for her family. Well, sorry, for the family of Dr. Harold um, Smullyan. Prayers for her dear friend, Marty Lange, as she is now in hospice care. And of course, prayers for her mother having surgery tomorrow. I'm Noreen Butterfield. I need prayers for myself as I have an infection in my hands. And Erin Vosbury, prayers to all. Good morning from, from Lucas and um, herself. That is Erin Vosbury. Um, so we receive their greetings. Um, yes, it has begun to snow, but um, I see the, the temperature is looking good. Um, as the week goes on, you know, you know, I'm from the Caribbean, so I'm still getting used to this snow. Um, friends, yes. Your sister-in-law, Faye. Rhonda. Wanda. Okay. Prayers from um, for Phoebe's sister-in-law. Um, of course, um, anything else, anything you'd like to mention as I prepare to do the closing prayers, friends? Thank you. Cheryl Green. Cheryl Green, we remember her as she prepares for a procedure. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let us keep all these people and situations in mind. Our hearts break for your world, Lord, for the violence, the injustice, and the losses. God of mercy, let your steady hand guide all nations and bring forth out of chaos and conflict a harmony more perfect than we can conceive a new humility and understanding, a renewed sense of truth, and a new hunger and thirst for your love to rule the earth. We pray that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease. And that there will be peace on earth. O oh, gracious God, we pray for our web sponsors, the Vosbury and the Gilbert families, giving thanks for their generous support of our online ministry. Thank you for all those who can participate virtually. Bless the homes of these, our sponsors, your servants. And supply the every need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Lord, we join in celebrating with these families, Jim Trowbridge and Andrew Gilbert's birthday. Praying that our celebrants will not forget your teaching, but keep your commands in their heart. Bless them with life for many years and bring them peace and prosperity. We pray that love and faithfulness will never leave them and they will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and human beings. This is our prayer for them and for all who celebrate at this time. Oh God, you know our frame and you have compassion on the afflicted. We lift up all who are sick, infected with COVID, undergoing tests and treatment, awaiting results, recuperating from surgery, recovering from injury, or preparing for some procedure, facing any health challenge. Lord, you've heard the names of those we have already mentioned. Along with them, we pray for Karen, for Anne Sterling, for Ryan, for Paul Mandat and his mother Arlene, Sandy Foltz, Lydia Williams, Nancy Nixdorf, 
Mary Gardner, Glenda Schultz, and all those we've mentioned before, Lord, we lift them up to you now. We hold them up so that you may touch them, Lord. We give thanks for the assurance that you, Lord, our God, send blessing on our food and water, and that you promise to take away sickness from among us. So we put our trust in these promises. We lift up our young people to you, Lord. And thinking at this time of Clarissa Christ, be with her, be with her, Lord, as she as she seeks to order her life according to your will. We pray that you will guide her to success. Comfort your people who mourn today and grant eternal rest to those who have died. We pray for our nation, especially as we face an uptick in the, in the um, COVID cases. Lord, we thank you for the vaccines that are coming and we pray that they will be effective as they are put to use. Lord God, bless our church, this congregation and the church worldwide and use us as your beacon, as your messengers to help to bring good news to all who need to hear it. We ask these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We close as we sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. May you all be blessed as we sing the words of this lovely hymn. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of blood. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, with the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight.
to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. The God of peace be with you always. Amen.